Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers and their coaches. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I can see what most people cannot see. And I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can be incredibly lonely. You can feel more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. Clients who are more successful, more intelligent and wealthier than you need your support more than they know and more than you can imagine. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens and the world looks different and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. Welcome back, everyone, to the Excellent Decisions podcast. This is Robert McPhee, your host, and we are in the midst of what we are calling the Wisdom Series, where uh, we're not only doing what we always do, which is striving to help people make more excellent decisions, more decisions based on vision and values and value rather than stress and pressure. Uh, This Wisdom Series is designed because there's so much stress and pressure these days with everything that's going on in the world. Um, that this is a daily podcast designed to help you tap into some of the wisdom that's been available to me for the past 20 years or so as I've been blessed to work with and learn from and collaborate with some of the truly amazing teachers and trainers in the personal professional development world, uh, literally internationally. So uh, today, uh, my guest is Rich Litvin, who is the author of an amazing book, which is always right here within arm's reach for me. If you're watching the video, I'm holding it up. It's called The Prosperous Coach. He is a very high-level coach himself. He's also a coach of coaches, helping coaches be better coaches. And he also is brilliant at teaching coaches how to market their business and, and make it profitable. So, Rich, I am thrilled that you have joined us today. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, my friend. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for the invitation. And, uh, and we're going to throw a little curveball. Actually, I'm catching a little bit of a curveball here because uh, I was talking to Rich ahead of time before we hit the record button here and uh, suggesting some of the, the questions that I might ask him and the directions that I might want to go. So I don't want to, you know, pull the 60 minutes card, you know, and go all investigative journalist on you. And, and he had another suggestion. And I told Rich that I trust him implicitly. And it's his wisdom that we want to dive into here. So, Rich, do you want to explain the, what you had suggested to me and, and what direction sure. we're going to go with this? Sure. Here's what I suggested. And I said, this is edgy um, and I would honor your decision, whichever you, you chose. But um, my zone of genius is coaching. And my clients are super successful people, really high performers. The kind of people most people would, when they look at them, say, why would you need a coach? And it struck me that you're just one of those people who've done extraordinary things, created extraordinary things, have extraordinary stories behind you. And rather than me teaching and sharing what you call my wisdom, let's see what's going on inside of you. Let's see how I can support you right now. And that takes a level of courage. It takes a level of vulnerability, which for me is the secret behind high level leadership that most people shy away from. So I really honor you for saying yes to this because you don't know what's coming now. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I really don't. I literally found out about this in the last five minutes. We had a little techno glitch, which gave me like two minutes to think about it. Um, and the truth is, you know, my initial response, you know, being human, I think, was, oh, no, no, that wasn't what I had planned, right? No, I had, I had my plan here. Um, but one, because, you know, the opportunity to be coached by you is an incredible opportunity. And two, because I really do trust your wisdom and your intuition of what's appropriate for the moment. Um, totally willing to do that. So uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm totally willing to play. Great. Well, you just illustrated something important, actually. It's worth drawing out for everyone else. This is not about coaching you right now, but um, I was listening to Stephen Kotler interviewing a, um, a neuroscientist and a Navy SEAL the other day. Stephen Kotler wrote The Rise of Superman. He wrote Bold with Peter Diamandis, um, prolific author. And 
they drew out this distinction that fear equals anxiety plus uncertainty. And I love that because the moment you can distinguish between those two elements, you're able to handle the anxiety or the uncertainty or both. So what just happened to you when I said, hey, how about instead of you interviewing me for your podcast, what if I coach you live and we put this out to your community? There was probably a sense of anxiety and uncertainty mm-hmm. that, that arose. But what you did, because the, the, we had to get off the call for a moment because of the technical stuff, you had a moment to realize, okay, well, you probably took a couple of deep breaths. You got in touch with the fact that we trust one another, that, that you'd be safe, and the anxiety began to drop down. And the uncertainty, well, the, the, we labor under this misapprehension that most of the time in life we have certainty. We actually never have certainty. We just think we do. And this moment in life for all of us right now is showing us just quite how uncertain life is. But you can always bring back certainty in a moment. So one of the ways that we live in uncertainty is we, we live in indecision. So we're not sure what to do. So we stay in that place of not, not taking any action. The moment when you take you make a decision and take an action, then the uncertainty goes away. You just say, yeah, okay, I'm in. Now there's no uncertainty. Now you have to respond to what comes next. You might decide, oh, I don't like the way he's coaching me. I don't like the things that are coming up right now. But the moment a decision has been made is one of the ways you can reduce uncertainty. And so you took away the anxiety and the uncertainty and the fear is gone. And that's just two people having a conversation. And now, now you're just outright promoting excellent decisions is what you're doing. So. <laughs> nice. There you go. Exactly. You're the master. And, and I would say also, and, and this is not a, a stalling technique, but this conversation is exactly why I was so called to do this wisdom series is because we are, first of all, living in a world of, of anxiety and uncertainty, like maybe never before. Lots of anxiety, lots of uncertainty. And, and I was noticing, again, that, that I was having, I wouldn't say an easy time, but, but looking around me, I was, I was handling it with less stress and anxiety than most people. And I realized that a lot of that had to do with the, the knowledge, the skills, the, the people I've hung around with and what I've learned over the last 20 years. So it literally, you know, that, that equation of, you know, handling the anxiety plus the uncertainty was exactly what, you know, the, the wisdom series was intended to do. So I'll stop stalling now. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> We're in the right place. So let me ask you a question. What, what, what's, what's on your mind right now, Robert? Uh, I think the first thing that's on my mind is my family. And it doesn't stay on my mind like in a dwelling on it kind of a way because they're all doing great. Um, You know, you know me well enough to know, uh, you know, I have three children, they're older, 22, 24, and 26 right now, which sounds really well planned. There's like three months out of the year where it sounds sounds really well planned like that. Um, But they're, they're spread out. They're in Seattle, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. We have really great communication with them. They're all doing just fine. Um, and my wife and I are still talking to each other while we're sheltered in place. So, so everything's going well there. That's a bit, but it's in terms of what's really kind of on my mind, in terms of what's kind of on my mind in a keeping me awake at night kind of way, it's more business things. Uh, the truth is my, my business, uh, the main sources of revenue in my business have for the moment gone away. My business is driven by getting on an airplane, traveling, working with groups of people. Neither of those things are really happening right now. Talk about uncertainty. I'm curious as a kind word about when that's all going to start up again. So that's, that's what I'm dwelling on in terms of what's on my mind. Thanks for sharing that. I'm a dad to two kids. So I, I, and my brother has older kids than me and one of his, he's in Dubai and his, one of his children is, uh, is in England and it's intense to be separated at this time. So I, my heart goes out to you. Um, and I love that it sounds like you've raised three young people who you feel secure about at least that they know how to make excellent decisions. Let's put it that way. Yes. And, uh, truth is the excellent decisions framework about making decisions based on vision and values rather than stress and pressure came largely out of the perspective of looking at young people and how much stress and pressure they're facing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have stress and pressure, but once they hit about, you know, middle school, high school, it's just crazy what they're faced with. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, let me ask you a different question in this moment. So uh, I'll give you context. I was with, uh, to, uh, not with, over a Zoom call talking to my finance person a couple of days ago. And she said, what's the biggest risk to your business, Rich, in the next 30 days? And my bookkeeper was there and she said, well, it's, you know, will clients cancel? What will happen to the money coming in? Uh, will people ask for refunds? And I caught myself and I said, no, that's not, that's not it. The number one risk to our, my business in the next 30 days is that I don't take care of me, that I'm out there serving other people, being there for others, uh, making a difference. And I put myself last. What's the number one risk to your business in the next 30 days, Robert? Uh, I feel like it's interesting. It came to me right away while you were sharing yours, but I, I feel like the biggest risk I feel, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to go to that loss of income right here, right now, but I feel like the biggest risk is obsolescence. Like I'm finding myself uh, deeply concerned at times that the work that I have been doing, the work that I've been prepared to do may not have the same relevance when we settle into a whole new normal mm. in however many months it's going to be. Um, that, you know, it, and, and the truth is I was experiencing uh, like a 20 years to create an overnight success kind of moment in my business for the last six months. I've had a level of success that, that I've been waiting for for a long time and things are going really well and putting money in the bank and, you know, all this great stuff. And all that came to a grinding halt, which honestly, that's okay if, if I knew that it was going to pick up later. I'm fine. You know, I've got that money in the bank, but, but that kind of that obsolescence, like, like, will it pick up? Um, uh, I was walking to the store the other day and, uh, and realizing, you know, there's all this conversation about essential and non-essential businesses. And, and I looked at myself in the mirror kind of and said, you know, I'm a non-essential business. You know, I'm a, I'm a discretionary item. I'm a, I'm a luxury item is what it feels like. And at this time where people are buying things like, groceries and for some reason I still don't understand toilet paper lots and lots of toilet paper um, it, it Let me just, ask you, I'm curious what what has you look at what you do and see it as a discretionary item um, I think it's it's my perception of what my clients priorities are and, I, and I, I feel like I'm looking out there now and seeing people hunkering down and, and myself included, going into kind of the essentials. And there's things that I like to do and that I enjoy doing and there's kind of that I want to do. And then there's the things I need to do. You know, I need, I need to eat, I need to pay the rent, I need to you know, pay the phone bill, those kinds of things. Um, and I, I'm aware in the question that I'm looking at it through my own lens and that's probably clouding my perception of what my clients or prospective clients would think. But uh, I'm just, I see it as, again, that kind of non-essential extra. When we have time, when we have resources, this is the kind of thing we do. Interesting, interesting. Um, as I look at it, this world that I'm in, uh, you know, coaching consulting world that we're in between us to me it's it's essential i mean it's essential in the good times if you want to be thriving and catching when the dip is going to come next because we hope that the the line for success looks like that but that's not my experience the the line for success is ups and downs and hopefully i'll tip the line with the ups and downs on but life is full of ups and downs always so in the good times it's really important to have a trusted advisor by your side but in challenging times over here i think it's more so and it sounds like you have the opposite view at least until this moment where no it's not it's not essential actually when times are challenging the last thing you want to do is have a luxury like a consultant by your side helping you make excellent decisions well and i i i'm realizing as you're saying this like i I, I'm having two experiences. One is, is a very acute awareness that there's never been a more important time to be making excellent decisions. Again, the, the level of stress and pressure, different, but arguably greater than it's ever been. Yeah. And, and to be clear about our values and our vision and what's really important to us mm -hmm. and staying centered and grounded and, and having our actions be driven by that rather than 
that so we're seeing for so many people, which is decisions made based on all the stress and pressure in the news and the fear and the panic and all that. I, I totally agree. And, and what your questions are making me realize is that I'm not translating that to my client or my potential client. That when I kind of flip it around and, and do the best I can to see it from their point of view, I very quickly go to, yes, that's true. It's, it's, I guess it's a sense of, you know, there's, there's what I perceive that I, that what they need that would be valuable for them. And then there's my sense of, of what I perceive that they want and what's important to them in this moment. Maybe it's partially just a timing thing. I mean, for the last two weeks, I, I think we were talking about this before we actually hit record, but it's felt like a really inappropriate time to develop a new program and be, you know, selling it and, you know, only three spots available and you know, kind of thing. Uh, it's felt like a time to give and, and to support. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, as you, I'm working from home. I can hear the wife and kids next door making noise. Can you hear that on? Uh, I cannot. And it's okay. fine. Yes. Part of the wisdom series is we're all <laughs> doing we the best we can. Uh, yeah. Everyone's getting used to zoom, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so there's what our clients want and there's what our clients need. And this is true. Whatever moment in time it is, our clients come to us for the thing that they want. If you're consulting in business at some point, there's a moment on the list of things that the clients want. If it's not number one, it's number two or three. I want to increase the bottom line. I want to have a big return on investment. It's up there. So you, you can know what, what they, right. If, if people make, if, if, if your clients get more, more grounded in their vision and their values, get more grounded personally and can make excellent decisions, I have got no doubt in my mind there's going to be a massive impact on uh, the connection between the people in the organization, on leadership, on the way that they negotiate, the way that they make decisions, and the income and the revenue they generate. No doubt in my mind. So you can say to them, well, if that's what you want, let me tell you what we do. And, and here's why that has a, an impact on that. There's what they want and what they need. And what they need is... They need to be clear about their vision, their values, to be more grounded, to make excellent decisions. But if they knew that's what they needed, they wouldn't be calling you in the first place. They don't know that's what they need. So you have to talk about what they want. Right. Yeah, and that honestly, in this conversation, I'm aware that that path is completely different than what I've been looking at. I've been looking at, do they want what I offer? Like you said, the you know, clar clarity on vision and values and decision making and those kinds of things. And the, the path that you're talking about <laughs> seems so obvious, but um, the path of what do they really want? Do they, do they want to survive this particular time? Do they want to take care of their employees? Do they want to maintain their profitability? Do they want on the other side of this, the, the viability and the, you know, the ability to thrive in whatever the new normal is? And, and the truth is in a lot of cases, that's how the work I do will apply is in that gap. Yeah. But I've been ignoring that gap and skipping right over to asking myself is what I do, what they want. There are only three questions I ask clients these days or, or anyone I'm speaking to what's on your mind. Sometimes we just need to talk. We just need to share what's going on. You started talking about family immediately. We all do at this moment. So what's on your mind? What's your biggest challenge? what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Or I asked today, what's the biggest risk to your business? And then I asked, would you like some help with that? That's it. And, and at this moment in time, there's no preamble. When I say, what's the biggest challenge you're facing? People go right there. They don't waffle. They don't, go <laughs> yeah, they don't have to go. They don't have to go looking for it. <laughs> Let me think about that for a minute. We go straight there. And would you like some help with that? And so the service, the book you just showed that I wrote in 2013 got published is a uh, the prosperous coach is about how do you build a service-based business by serving it's a really old-fashioned approach to business you just serve your ass off and and you know there are only two ways to work with me i like to joke robert there's two ways to work with me for absolutely free or for a lot of money there's nothing in between and and so i have a handful of clients who who invest a lot in their business in their life in their professional world and professional growth and they're, they're the people who work with me directly and there are all sorts of ways I'm serving people 
at the best of times, whether it's on video or audio or podcast. I, I spoke to one of my clients two days ago. She used to work for Google. Now she's an independent coach and consultant. She lives in Italy and she mentioned one of her clients is a surgeon on the front lines in Italy right now, the health wow. crisis. And she said, and she joked, she said, or she laughed, she said, you know, and he's a big fan of yours, Rich, he knows about you. So I immediately said, would you like to surprise him? What if we get on a call with you and me and him and I coach him? And she said, oh my God, that would be amazing. He would love that. I'm constantly looking for ways that I can serve right now. And, and that's, that's approach to business in all times. Mm -hmm. And here's the bit when you said about selling. Yeah, now's not a good time to be saying the way that you joked about it. Here's my program. This is this price by now. But it's okay to sell right now. It's okay to tell people that you have something that's of value. I mean, I, so I just hired a new coach on Friday. I had a first session on Friday with a new coach. I realized I can't do this alone. The business mastermind I'm in is valuable, but it's not what I need right now. I need support for me. And so I hired someone as my coach because I believe in this work that I do so much that when times get challenging, I look at how can I take my money and invest it in me? Because if I invest it in me, I'll have better relationships with my wife and my kids. My business will grow. My clients will be more supportive. And we have to walk our talk a little bit on this one. Yeah, for sure. Wow. So, and it's a, it's a, it's a segue also into one of the things I told you, it was one of my huge takeaways from your book about. Let, let me, let me, can I ask you to bookmark that for a second? Sure. Bookmark that thought, make a note if you need to, but I want to stay with being here for you and not being there of service for everyone who's listening. Okay. What, what's the single biggest insight you've had so far from anything we've talked about? The single biggest uh, uh, insight by far is that pathway that I was skipping past. Uh, and I think it's, it's a huge insight for me because there's, there's actually no resistance to that conversation. Sometimes I, I skip conversations because there's resistance and I don't want to get into them. You know, I'm dealing with a situation right now with a, with a woman who I'm working with and I, I don't want to have this conversation. I, anyway, that's a whole different story. I think it resolved itself this morning. Um, but the fact is that converse, the conversation about the pathway, the conversation about what my client or what my potential client or what my friend or what my family member really wants right now, like what's really important to them. I love getting in that conversation. The reason why it's such a no brainer, like what I'm taking away from this is like, oh my God, how did I miss that? It's right there in front of me. It's what I love to do. It's what I'm really good at. And oh, by the way, it will take me sometimes, not every time, but sometimes to a place called maybe I can really help you with that. Here's how I can potentially help you with that. And um, I think the other reason why that piece is resonating so much for me right now is I had a conversation like that actually before all this coronavirus stuff kind of started to pop up. Uh, but I had a conversation with a personal friend who runs a business and it was exactly that conversation you described. It was just, Hey, what's up? How's everything going? You know, what are the challenges that you're faced with? And what I thought was going to be about an hour long conversation turned into a two and a half hour conversation, which again, I thought of you and you, you, <laughs> you recommend blocking out two hours for those conversations. And I, I saw why, because it, the real juice of the conversation wouldn't have happened if we only had an hour. Yeah. And after two and a half hours of me not offering any solutions or any ideas or telling him what he should do or being the all wise and all knowing being or anything, we ended up having dinner uh, with his wife and, and he was telling her, Oh my God, Robert had all these amazing ideas and he's going to help so much. And we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Um, so, so that conversation that you pointed out that I was skipping over, that piece called, what's up? How are you doing? Yeah. What's the biggest challenge you're faced with? I, I'm asking myself, why was I skipping that conversation? That's so much better than the conversation I've been having, uh, having in my head and, and resisting getting into any conversations because of it. So that's- uh, well, well, here's what great, what's great about what you just told me is that whilst it's surprising, like, oh, how did I get into that? the how to it matters less than the fact that you did. And so do all your clients. We get into our head, we get into this loop and we can't get out of it on our own. It only ever happens in a conversation. 
And so reaching out to your clients and saying, hey, you know what? I realized I got caught in this loop of inaction, of not making decisions, um, until I got in a conversation, in a conversation with a friend of mine who does the same work that I do, and I realized, oh, of course. I, immediately, I had my insights, I was done. 15 minutes in, I was done. This is what I do. If you're caught in a loop right now, if you can't see the wood for the trees, if life looks scary, I've spent over 20 years working on myself, working with high-level leaders to help people like you make excellent decisions in the best of times and even more importantly, in the, in the really challenging times. You want to jump on a call? I, I got to go, Rich. I got calls to make. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. And it's just, you know, there's, I've been resisting getting into conversations with clients and potential clients because I don't want to be in that place of kind of being perceived as salesy. And I have been kind of questioning whether what I have is what they want and, and not making up a story about it, but just seeing it for what it really is totally changes that. It, it literally does. I'm starting to make a list in my head right now of, of all the people that I can call yeah, instead of, you know, having no idea who to put on that list and everyone who I think about putting on that list going, no, they wouldn't want to talk to me. No, they wouldn't want to talk to me. It's like, yeah, it's completely different. I got three distinctions I can share with you. Number one is right now, particularly for anyone who's listening, I got the sense for you, it's a phone call, but for most people they hear this and they're like, oh, I've great, let me send an email. Our email inboxes have blown up in the last two weeks because every single company you ever hired is telling you their COVID-19 policy and, <laughs> and, and what they're doing differently. And, and it's, there's no point sending another, or, or people are trying to sell you stuff. Um, there's no point sending emails if you want to be in service of people. And even text messages, we're all at home. I, by the start of the day, the end of the day, I can have 25 text messages. The one thing that I've noticed that really stands out is a video text. You take your iPhone or your WhatsApp, and you make a 30 second, 20 to 30 second video. And so you think of a friend, hey John, I was thinking of you, how's life? It dawned on me that for 20 years, I've been helping people make really powerful decisions in, in, in challenging times and in good times. If, if you've got a decision, right, if, if you're struggling right now, if you're caught up in your own thinking right now, this is what I do. And I have time on my hands. If you want to have 15 minutes, and I always, whilst I love two hour conversations, Robert, people are overwhelmed, haven't got time for two hours. Yeah. If you want to have 10 or 15 minutes, jump on a call with me. I promise you, you will leave with a sense of clarity and a powerful decision or a single action you can take at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And if, if you're good for now, that's lovely. I'm sending you some love right now. That's it. You have to put humility to one side. You have to own what you do. And, and you give them the chance, say, you want to jump on a call for 15 minutes, here's what you'll leave with. And I love saying that piece around at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, you'll have a single, a single action you can take because that's what people need right now, clarity. Well, you just lobbed out, put humility to the side too, but that hit me on the head like a sledgehammer. So thank you for that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Dude, you, you, you've spent more time than most people on this planet understanding how in, in the most challenging of circumstances, if you get in tune with your vision, your values, you get grounded, you can make excellent decisions. There's nothing more that people need right now than you and what you've been studying and teaching for over 20 years. So you were saying, uh, you were su you're suggesting the video text. But that's what I found a really simple and easy way with a little script like that. You, 20 seconds, you, people, you get much more response from that at this moment in time. That's my first distinction. Um, second one, serve two layers deep. If you call all of your clients right now, hey, Fred, I was thinking of you. Um, it dawned on me what we haven't talked about yet is what's the biggest challenge that your customers or clients are facing right now? Let me know because I can help you help them. Go two layers deep. You can serve your clients, but if you start asking them what's the biggest challenge your clients or customers have right now, you become a superhero. Mm. I'm taking notes. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> um, third distinction. 
you, this, this idea you have about being salesy. Um, you have to go from being a seller into a, a, a buyer right now, turn, turn, turn yourself from a seller into a buyer. Um, it, we've got it the wrong way around. And this is, again, this is again, good for normal times. I'll give you an example. We applied for our kids to get into a, a, a lovely school, a private school here in LA. And my first kid, he's eight now, but we applied for him to get into kindergarten. And we got onto the waiting list. It was our first choice and we were disappointed. So I wrote a letter and I said, because I realized I'd made a mistake. I thought we're paying you money. We're the buyer and, and you're the seller. And I realized, no, 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 I'm the seller. You're the buyer because the, it was hard for me to get my kids in there. I hadn't got them in. I wrote a letter. So let me tell you who I am in the world. This is who I am. It's what I believe. This is what I do in the world. This is who my wife is. These are our family values. This is how we're raising our kids. This is the contribution we made to the last school and what we will bring to you. We were the only family to move from the wait list to get a place at that school. You're not selling anything right now. Get out of that mindset. You have something amazing that when you serve people, they have to sell themselves to you. Hey, Robert, what you you're taking on clients right now? Like I know you're busy and you have your different uh, clients, people you work with. Is there any way you can help me? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. The, the, the heart of the prosperous coach approach, Robert, is serve people so damn powerfully, they never forget your conversation for the rest of their lives. Some of those people will say, how do I work with you? Some will want to work with you, but won't come back for three, four, five years because time's not right, money's not right. And some you'll never hear from again. You're just, your mission every time, serve people so powerfully, they never forget your conversation for the rest of their life. That's it. It's all the business plan you need for the rest of your life. Well, and some of those conversations, you, you and I, in the role that we play in those conversations, will realize that we're not the best person for them, right? Yep, absolutely. And I always find that to be a really good thing to remember, like in terms of like being attached to any specific outcome from a, outcome from a conversation, to say, it's you know, it's it's quite possible that the best thing I could do for them is introduce them to someone else. Yeah. But how will I find out? Get into the same conversation. Yeah. I find that so opening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I should invite you to my podcast more often. This is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I appreciate your willingness to take a risk to be vulnerable in front of your community. Uh, vulnerability is a superpower. We get this wrong about leadership. We think leadership is about strength. We've got it all together. Three or four years ago, I had some financial difficulties in my business. And at the end of the year, I did a review with my team and I said to them, you know, I want to tell you guys, we've been struggling a little bit behind the scenes around money. While we were bringing a lot of money in, we had a lot of debts to pay and I was struggling a little bit. And I, I, I wanted to stay strong and not let you know. And, and everyone in the team was like, we knew rich <laughs> I was like, oh, you did? and they said why didn't you bring us in why didn't you let us help we could have come up with ideas we could have brainstormed we could have so this time around two weeks ago i brought my team in immediately and we've been brainstorming and creating and supporting one another and and, and and creating great stuff because of it so your willingness to be this open in front of your community your vulnerability is, is a real testament to your strength as a leader robert i really acknowledge well thank you i appreciate that and uh, as I said at the beginning, and you referenced it, uh, we have a mutual friend, Scott Cody, who talks about the four pillars of trust, which are sincerity, reliability, competence, and care. And Rich is a four for four in my world. I know that he's sincere. I know that he's reliable. I know that he's beyond competent, and I know how much he deeply cares. And so when when you personally asked me to be willing to be vulnerable, you know, here we are on camera, I'm gonna be posting this, I'm <laughs> whatever. It's, it's a different conversation than if you're questioning, you know, if this was someone I had met before, I don't know, are they reliable, are they confident? How much do they care, you know? It's, it's a different conversation. So um, I'm thrilled that we had the opportunity to do this. It's a completely different conversation than I thought we were gonna to have today. I think there's tremendous value um, for the people who are listening in and certainly for me. So win, win, win. I hope it's been valuable for you. <laughs> um, I, if I can wake up every morning and serve one person, my, my, my day is done. 
All right, we'll take the rest of the day off then. Yeah. Well, I, I <laughs> wish we could, right? With the kids for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm on childcare duty today. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this, and, and we, I, I do want to make sure we honor the time too, but, but you've been very generous. And, and um, so if people want to know more about you, if, if they want to connect with the work that you're doing, learn more about the work or connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, thanks, Robert. Uh, richlitvin.com. Uh, R-I-C-H-L-I-T-V-I-N, richlitvin.com. Um, I, I just put together, this the last two weeks, putting together a playbook for coaching in challenging times. Whether that's because you're a coach or a consultant or whether you need some self-coaching right now, just go to richlitvin.com forward slash playbook and you can just download that immediately. Um, you know, I spent two weeks creating this, Robert, all these distinctions about how to survive and thrive in these challenging times. And at the end of it, I realized two things. One, I was writing this for me. It's the book that I need to read. And two, whilst it's a playbook for challenging times, it's actually a playbook for all times. Take care of yourself first, serve other people, go out there and, 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 and take a stand and be a leader. And so uh, uh, please download that, share that with other, other people. I think it's really valuable right now. Awesome. And I will put that in the description of the podcast. If you're driving, please don't try to write that down. Um, and again, deeply grateful for you being willing to do this. The other thing, and I thought about this ahead of time, and it's definitely true, I think in these times of increased stress and pressure, we all need to spend more time talking to people who have a British accent. You know, there's just something calming about like your voice. And uh, so thank you for bringing that as well. Thanks, man. <laughs> Um, all right. And thank you to our listeners as well. Obviously, there's no podcast without our listeners. I'm loving the feedback that I'm getting pe from people about this particular wisdom series. Um, again, the intention is to help you uh, in these trying times to make more excellent decisions, to be clearer about your own vision and values, and, uh, and to stay in that state of, of what we call true happiness by the ancient Greek definition of happiness, the experience of joy while in pursuit of your potential. So until the next episode, we will uh, see you soon. And thanks again, Rich. Deeply, deeply appreciate your contribution today. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching, it was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.